Yeah, I mean, the thing that I loved about the script when I read it was that it didn't take the show too seriously. And because it was smarter than that, <laughs> you, it gets the audience to enjoy laughing at some of the, the motifs and the cliches that the show was the master of. And so I... Uh, I loved that it that it was making that attempt, and it wasn't just trying to be, you know, purely honoring the original. Because I think we all know the original was a little bit campy, a little bit cheesy. But I think that it it was very smart about how it did it, and it really knew what it was. And I think that that it was essential that we do that in the movie. You know, we got to have some red swimsuits and some slow mo running. And we got to have some beautiful people, and there we got to have the beach and lifeguards, and and ideally some Hasselhoff and Pamela Anderson if you can. And so we tried to figure out a way to get all those things to happen, but with a little bit of a wink. So you knew that we knew that you were coming here expecting that, right? But then in a lot of other ways, try to try to move past it and give all the. The female characters, depth, complexity, they're different from each other. The bad girl is a bad girl, not a bad guy, not a stock, you know, character. And there's these themes of, uh, you know, authority, idealism, knowing your place, and how, how Mitch, as a character, is pushing all those boundaries on all sides. And I think that that's, those are some really relevant themes. And I, I wanted that to pump up that part of it. Sure. I'll tell you what helped me a ton is I met with Greg Bonin, who was the original Mitch, the guy who directed the show, the, the pilot of the original show, and I think he did 100 episodes. And um, he's still a lifeguard himself. He's the longest working lifeguard in the country and the oldest now. And he, he's the real deal. And he showed me all his friends that were lifeguards that he based his original characters on. He had a record of all this. So that helped me understand I'm not casting the, sh the movie in the shadow of the show. I can go back to the source of what gave rise to the show and, and base the characters on those people. And that freed me up in a big way. And it's when we started you know, looking for people that either hadn't been in movies before or just cast the net further afield, you know? And, I, and that, that was big. That was big. And it allowed us to really, to accomplish some of the other things I wanted, which was real diversity of all kinds in the cast and not have everybody have to look, you know, I don't know, like the 80s version of a supermodel, right? But many kinds of beauty, um, you know, many looks, the Ronnie character, there's no Ronnie in the show, but that's, I think, a huge part of the movie is this guy that doesn't look like he'd be a lifeguard. And in some of the photos of the original lifeguards that were on Greg's team, there was a guy that was very much like Ronnie. So to me, that was, you know, that was big and, and, and helped me, you know, branch out. Yeah, I, I feel like it was whenever you have Dwayne Johnson in the movie and you have even a hint of action, it better be good action. And that's something that I really wanted to do, too, personally as a director, because it was an opportunity to play with some of the toys that I haven't gotten to yet or hadn't. Um, so, you know, I thought it was a real priority that if we're going to do the action, we're going to do it right and we're not going to sort of phone it in or have it look like green screen or, you know, any of those things that the financial pressures would force on a movie usually. And so we fought hard to have, you know, when we do it, we're gonna do it well. I think he's a leader on a lot of levels um, because he's, he's always, not just the way he carries himself and how he treats everyone and the, you know, the great quality of the people that are in his life and around him on his team, but, um, just showing up prepared, like knowing his stuff and and being ready and 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 you know simply the exercise regimen, you know, like this is a guy that takes his stuff seriously, and I think that that is a, is automatically a leader. 
Oh, it was awesome. I mean, I, the second I saw them together in person for the first time was at the really the table read, which was part of prep. And they were, I just was like, this is gonna work. It's gonna work. They are so good together and they are so different. You know, we've got like the bass and the baritone <laughs> in a way, and they are just such compliments to each other. And I, I was really, I was thrilled. I think the, some of the actors, first of all, are so young, they didn't see the show when it was on TV. They couldn't, <laughs> okay? But for the ones that did know the show, I think they, they really loved and respected the show and have this sort of special place in their heart for it. So when the Hoff showed up and with Pamela showed up, people were sort of, you know, it's like they glossed over. Like everything kind of glowed a little bit. <laughs> And, and like that notion of the super slow-mo was really how it felt there, you know? Like, oh my God, Pamela's here. You know, like it, it had that kind of effect on everybody. Um, so I, and that was true for me too on a separate level for Hoff because I was just a huge fan of Knight Rider when I was a kid, enormous. And, and I, I can't help, you know, going back to that place when I, that day he showed up, you know, it was just exciting. I think it, the original show reached so far and wide really because it was selling a heroism and an idealism in this beautiful setting that was kind of like the American dream in a way, like go west, things are perfect, right? Um, but I think that Things, times have certainly changed and, and where we are now in the world, especially this last year, I think the reason we need this movie is totally different. We need to laugh. We need to have something just to, just to take the edge off of, of the reality of the world right now. And, and I think that this movie will hopefully give people at least a couple hours to take a break from everything else. Hi, Vale here with more on comedy for you. Now, when you think of comedy, you don't necessarily link comedy movies to the Oscars. In fact, very rarely have comedy films won the Best Picture Oscar. The following have been the only comedies that have won Best Picture. It happened one night from 1934. You can take it with you from 1938, the musical comedy Going My Way from 1944, Tom Jones from 1963, The Sting from 1973, and Annie Hall from 1977. There are other borderline or hybrid comedies that have won the award, including The Apartment from 1960, Terms of Endearment from 1983, Driving Miss Daisy from 1989, Forrest Gump from 1994, Shakespeare in Love from 1998, and two dark comedies, American Beauty from 1999 and Birdman from 2014. What's your favorite comedy movie? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe to our channel for the all best comedy movie releases.